Hey guys, what's up? It's Pat here from Mount Sledder. Check it out. Sean and I are riding two identical of the same model year 2023 20, Skidoo Summit Neo Pluses. So these are the new mid-size offering from Skidoo, brand new for model year 2023. And we're going out, we're gonna explore them and see what these things can do. So let's do it. Here we go, Sean. Yeah, yeah. Hey, how cool is this? You just turn this key to start, and then it just keeps turning over until it, it goes. And as you can see from the sticks here, we kind of, some needles and stuff. We've already been exploring a little bit off trail. All right, Sean, do you want to lead the way? Sure. So far, we've been bashing these things up the trail. Yeah, over whoops and everything. I'm already pretty impressed by this thing, but let me tell you all about it first of all. Okay, so what is this thing? This is basically like a mid-sized um, mountain offering. And the point of it is uh, just to make it a little bit easier, more accessible for new riders, um, light riders, inexperienced, apprehensive, you name it, any of those type of riders, but that want to aspire to mountain riding, um, man, this is it. So basically, let's talk platform first. This thing is a Gen 4 platform, um, but it's basically scaled down. So um, what does that mean? It's got a lower ride height. It's considerably lower. I mean, I could put my feet on the ground right here when we're stopped. Oh, Sean's breaking trail. I like it. We're getting into it right away. It's got a lower seat, it's got low handlebars, it's got narrow handlebars, it's got narrow diameter handlebars. And uh, so those are some of the things that have kind of made it more mid-sized. The skid frame's all different too. It uses um, just a single shock uh, in the skid frame, but man, I'm impressed so far. We've been pounding it through whoops on the trails and everything and it's it's been awesome. Okay, well, we got some trees here and stuff. I guess we're going off trail right away. I'm gonna, we're gonna find out right now what this thing can do. So, we have a, oh, side hill's pretty nice. Oh, where'd it go, Sean? Oh, we're going right up the mountain here, okay. I'm gonna have to take a different, slightly different line than he did, but. Okay, hey guys, so here we are. We're having a good time on these brand new Model 23 year Skidoo Summit Neo Pluses. This is the mid-size sled. So Sean and I found ourselves up into the trees here and thought it was a good time to stop and just I'll give you guys just a little walk around of some of the features and basically the design of the thing. Um, basically just what I talked about while I was riding, but then give you guys a chance to take a look at it. So. I guess we'll, might as well start at the front. So we have a 34 inch ski stance. So that makes it uh, nice and nimble. And this is that Pilot uh, DS2 ski that's been around for a while. That was the one that was, uh, I believe it was on like the old Rev XM chassis. So it's a totally mount capable ski with lots of flotation. It's an awesome ski, strong. And uh, we've got the, uh, the Neo Plus has uh, the HPG shocks, um, which is an upgrade from what's on the Neo. So there are some upgrades on the Neo Plus, um, quite a few, in addition to the additional like horsepower. You get the 55 horsepower with the Neo Plus and 40 horsepower with the Neo. Even though it's the same engine, it's just a different engine uh, calibration and the tuned pipe is different and that's how they bring that uh, 600 EFI Rotax engine uh, horsepower down from 85 in its stock form that you might find on some other Ski-Doo sleds um, down to 55 for the Neo Plus. This uh, front vent, this was an open vent on the Gen 4. Um, it's been closed off for the Gen 5 
and for the sled it's also closed off which is great because otherwise you're just going to get a bunch of a uh, bunch of snow building up in there when you're shredding the pal. Uh, we've got the Gen 4 headlights as you can see and Gen 4 body panels. Take a look inside there. A bit of snow building up. Let's get that panel open. So there you go. There's your tune pipe. Little 600 cc power plant inside there. Looks like there's a lot of extra room in there. Then uh, what, what's going on with the Gen 4 850 and the uh, turbo, that's for sure. Anyways, close that up. Gen 4 running boards here, so these are good. Cl clear snow really well. And uh, pretty narrow body area. Um, so, tiny seat comes with the uh, Neo. Um, just to help lower the, the seat height and, you know, keep it compact and narrow for the smaller riders. Down here, so this uh, rear suspension is totally different. It's a single shock design. There's your shock right there. And we dig in there. Looks like we had a torsion spring on the far side there. So we can set that on the other side. I haven't actually seen that from the other side, but there it is. That's how you set your uh, torsion spring. And a couple bogey wheels. And twin rail, nice big rear wheel. So this here on the Neo Plus, the track is a uh, 146, as you can see, by 15 inch wide, and this is a 1.75 inch tall lug. So uh, it chews pretty good. I think probably the paddle size is in line with how much output the engine has, how much power they can put that. But uh, lugs look nicely reinforced and nice and stiff. And, uh, and then we have our tail flap so we don't get the short tail flap did a good job of cooling never got hot on the trail and trail was pretty packed we have a little bit of ice build up in there but it's freezing cold today so that is to be expected okay this is really cool you know this is like supposed to be your entry mountain sled boom links rack you're gonna carry your stuff into the mountains you need a lot of stuff there it is you can do uh, two individual things, or this is the uh, two-place tunnel bag, which is nice and low profile. That's an accessory, of course, but the uh, the brackets come with the sled, so you're set up to use whatever accessories you decide to purchase. Maybe a jerry can or whatever if you're doing big days, although I don't know how you'd run out of... Uh, fuel on a 600 but maybe if you had it tapped all day there is a tether here Sean's still wearing it because he likes to just keep it attached to him but that's where the tether attaches it's like a mini version of the old style one it works well you don't have to sit there and twist it like the old ones you had to and uh, here's your key here so off run and then uh, start so starts pretty cool you just crank it you just tap it over and it's uh, the starter runs for a little bit to get the, the engine going Oh, it's not going to work because the tether's not on there. Maybe I can fake it. I have two hands here. So there you go. And there's your gauge. That was the Gen 4 gauge. So you can do speed, elevation, temp, max speed. Um, all kinds of stuff on that, on that little thing. I won't go through all that. Um, Hand warmers here, hot and cold. There's about 10 different settings. You flick it all the way up. And this is the same as all the Gen 4 stuff, right? Like high beams, low beams, that stuff's all great. And then we have the handlebars. So the handlebars are a little bit narrower and the diameter is um, a more narrow diameter as well. So they're easier to hold on to for people with small hands or just even people with huge hands, it's just easier. And this is a different uh, throttle block. This has a shorter throw. So uh, it's a little bit easier for small hands to be able to, to hold on to the bars and just you know give that a good wide open throttle there. So the Neo Plus comes with the mountain grab bar as one of its uh, sort of premium things and also the flexible hand guards here. So those guys are nice to keep the wind and more importantly the snow off your hands and keep your grips from getting all iced up. As you can see, it's super cold out today, but our grips are in good shape. 
even with some good snow blown over the bow just because uh, these things help out a lot in that way. And we have our front trunk. There it is. Pretty good little storage for your toque sunglasses, bottle of water, whatever. That is about it, about as much as I can remember anyways, that makes this little thing pretty special. But uh, make sure you check out sluttermag.com for our post. It's got all the details, everything I might have missed or forgot or even said wrong. The correct version will be on sluttermag.com. Yeah, it's a pretty capable little sled. I mean, look where we are here. We're on the side of a mountain. We're in fresh snow. And we were told that there was no fresh snow around. It hasn't snowed in, I don't even know how long here, but hey, we found some, so you know these things are good. I'm already impressed by this thing, man. We were, uh, you know, cruising down the trail, capped out at about 57 miles an hour. I've heard these things can go up to like 80, I think. Actually, Sean checked the gauge on his and it was like, max speed was 85 on yours? That seems a bit much, but maybe that's sea level. Like, we're at 7,200 feet right now. So, I don't know, what's that in meters? Like, 2,000 meters, I guess? Yeah. Something like that. We're pretty high in elevation, so that's robbing a lot of those 55 horsepower. So, we've already lost maybe 15 or something like that. Um, check this out, this is cool. You wanna go into reverse, you just turn the key. Pops it into reverse. We're gonna make it, baby. We're gonna make it. We're gonna make it. Whoa, yeah! Rodeo! Yeah! Let's do some little uphill power cars, eh? All right. Woohoo! Oh, yeah! Oh man, this thing is easy to ride. Yes, Sean! Hey, that's fun, man. This thing is uh, a lot of fun to ride. Power's pretty good too, like, on the trail you can zip right along. I'm gonna do a few more of those kind of donut type things. Ah, I ran out of talent. So this thing is tippy in a good way. I mean, you need tippiness in the mountains. So to get that, it uses a 34 inch ski stance. So that's the same thing you get on the uh, Summit Expert and Summit X for 2023. And this thing chews uphill pretty good. Like this is probably a, a foot of fresh snow. I'm probably way heavier than, you know, what this thing was intended for and the user. I want to try one of those like uphill donuts almost where you like, you're going uphill and then you crank it and come back down. You kind of need a bit of power for those. So I'm going to get a run up. Let's see if I can do one right here. Ah! No, I can't do it. Ugh. Man, this thing rolls easy. Pretty light. This is a legitimate stepping stone into the mountains. And I hope we're showing that to you guys with what it can do. And, you know, like smaller, younger, inexperienced people aren't going to push it this hard. But if you can take a big old six foot plus guy like me who weighs almost 200 pounds without gear, add, you know, 40 or 50 pounds on top of that and go exploring it uphill in fresh snow in the trees, man, this thing is capable. But I feel like, uh, you know, with the power and the way that it comes on and stuff, that's what you want for a younger person. This is exactly what I would want for my teenage kids because I, I wouldn't be worried about them just cracking the throttle and, and piling it into a tree or off the trail and, and getting hurt or something like that. Like getting into power that's just 
beyond their capability to safely control. So it's perfect for that. Onwards. And it really is quite nimble. Like it, it, it's, it's very easy to just toss around. So part of that's that 34 inch ski stance and that uh, rear skid is pretty sweet. It's playful, it's fun, and you can get some good weight transfer with it. Um, you know, I actually popped the skis up on the trail with this. Just gonna hop it on the back of the rails and give it some gas and skis came in the air. Where to, Sean? Like to to get to okay, yep. Okay, we're going over there. We've never gone this way. We've never gone this route. We're just, this is mountain riding. This is what we're doing. We're just exploring and trying to pick our way through the woods and we're doing it on these machines. And man, I'm having a lot of fun. So yeah, we'll just slide our way down here through the trees somewhere. Oh, sounds, looks like we found somebody's old track here. So somebody else was uh, at one point in time in here. I'm gonna go this way a little bit more though. Sorry, little tree. But yeah, this, this thing is maneuverable. I don't know how light it is, like what is the actual weight? It feels light and nimble and maneuverable. There's Sean's track. Oh man, looks like somebody had some stucks in here and some creeks. Oh, there's Sean up there. He tried to make it up that hill. Okay, I'm gonna take more of a side hilly route. I think in that way I can uh, not get myself into trouble that I can't get out of with power. Little creek crossing here. I'm gonna have to take a run at that little hill. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, I got an old track here for traction. Oh yeah, baby. Might be the first one to the top here. I don't see Sean in there. Oh yeah. Man, this thing is capable. That little 1.75 track digs pretty good. I see Sean way down there. Do you see him? Nice try, Sean. Meanwhile, I'm up top burning donuts. In all seriousness, young mountain aspiring friends, always keep a rod, an eye on your riding buddy. There's Sean right there. Very important. There's creeks, there's tree wells, there is avalanche terrain, and uh, it doesn't take long to get into trouble in the mountains. So. When you're riding one of these things coming up, make sure you have a Master Miyagi. Go with somebody that's experienced, knowledgeable, knows what they're doing. Can keep an eye on you as you learn those same skills. And hopefully one day that you can share those with your own friends, family, kids, whatever. And that's how we grow our sport. So we're going to do that with machines like this. And uh, I give this one my stamp of approval. This thing is much more capable than I expected when we left this morning. And it's got power that you can build your confidence with. It's not scary. It's, uh, it's good. Here comes Sean right now. Yeah, Sean. He's, he's full pin up this slope right here. Yeah, buddy. So I always say that's the best way to build confidence and skills when you're doing something that is scary or has an element of danger to it, ease into it. Don't just jump into it and scare yourself. If you're new, you're learning, you don't feel that confident on the power of an 850 sled uh, or more. Right here. All right, Sean, the great adventure continues. Mm -hmm.